الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رمضان the month of القرآن day 20 حديث of the day عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنه قال بينما جبريل قاعد عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سمع نقيضا من فوقه فرفع رأسه فقال Ibn Abbas said that while Jibreel, Gabriel, Angel Gabriel was sitting with the Prophet he heard a creaking sound above him and after raising his head he said هذا باب من السماء فتح اليوم لم يفتح قطه إلا اليوم this is a gate opened in heaven today, which has never been opened before. فنزل منه ملك فقال هذا ملك نزل إلى الأرض لم ينزل قط إلا اليوم. Then when an angel descended through it, he said, this is an angel that had come down to earth who has never come down before. فسلم وقال أبشر بنورين أوتيتهما لم يؤتهما نبي قبلك فاتحة الكتاب وخواتيم سورة البقرة لن تقرأ بحرف منهما إلا أعطيته رواه مسلم He gave a salutation and said Rejoice in the two lights brought to you, which have not been brought to any prophet before you. Fatihatul Kitab, the opening surah of the Quran, and the last of surah, the end, the last two ayat of surah Al-Baqarah. You will not recite a letter of them except that you will be granted what you recited. Al-Fatiha is indeed a very special surah. It is Ummul Kitab and Ummul Quran. It is the foundation and the essence of the Quran. We recite it daily. It contains praise of the Lord of the worlds. Our renewal of pledge and covenant that we worship none except Him and beseeching and begging Him for guidance. Guidance to the straight path. Never like this surah has been revealed before to any prophet. Similarly, the end, the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah are just as important and unique. They were given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in heaven when he ascended to the presence of his Lord. This is during the event of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, the night journey and ascension to heaven. The ayat confirm our faith in God. While Allah acknowledging our weaknesses, He subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to not burden us more than what we can bear. Knowing how weak, forgetful, and sinful we are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us beautiful prayers and supplications. Prayers of pardon, forgiveness, and grace. It behooves every Muslim to memorize and learn the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah like we know Surah Al-Fatiha by heart. May Allah illuminate our hearts and lives with the Qur'an. Ameen. The Qur'anic version of the Ten Commandments, Part 9. The Tenth and last commandment of the Quranic version of the Ten Commandments is about modesty and humility. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Isra, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا إِنَّكَ لَن تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضَ وَلَن تَبْلُغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولًا And do not walk on the earth arrogantly. Surely you can neither crack the earth nor stretch to the height of the mountains. 
Surah Al-Isra, Surah number 17, ayah number 37. This ayah indicates that our pace or manner of walking should not reflect arrogance or pride in any way. The way one walks speaks a lot about one's personality and character. We learn from the Quran that the wise sage Luqman, while counseling his son, gave him instructions similar to the divine commandments. The first advice reflects the first commandment. Your Lord has decreed that you should worship none but him. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ Surah Al-Isra. Luqman said, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِظُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ And mention, O Prophet, when the wise man Luqman said to his son while advising him, while counseling him, O oh, my dear son, never associate anything with Allah, for associating others with Him is the greatest injustice. Surah Al-Luqman, Surah number 31, Ayah 13. Similar to the second commandment, be good to your parents. We find that good treatment of parents comes next. وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ and we have enjoined upon man to be good to his parents. Towards the end of his counseling, Luqman advises his young son, وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ And do not turn your cheek in contempt away from people. And do not strut about arrogantly on the earth, for God does not like arrogant or boastful people. Again, Surah Al-Uqman, Surah number 31, Ayah 18. These are the same words that resonate in the divine injunction given, and do not walk on the earth arrogantly. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا it is prudent that parents guide and train their young children in their prime years before they attain adulthood and maturity with Islamic injunctions, morals, and manners, even the way one should walk. The commandment in Surah Al-Isra, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا does not specify or suggest the manner in which one should walk. Surah Al-Luqman, however, does. وَاقْصِدْ فِي مَشْيِكَ وَاغْضُدْ مِنْ صَوْتِكْ إِنَّ أَنْكَرَ الْأَصْوَاتِ لَصَوْتُ الْحَمِيرِ Walk modestly and lower your voice, for the ugliest of all voices is the braying of donkeys. Ayah number 19, Surah Al-Luqman. One's pace should be modest and moderate, neither having one's face down looking at the ground nor up looking at the sky. Neither should one walk too fast nor too slow. The Arabic word for qasd in the ayah waqsid is suggestive of balance and moderation. Also, the tone of one's voice should not be too loud, high-pitched, or harsh. Rather, it should be somewhat low and measured. It is worth mentioning that the first and foremost quality of the slaves of the All-Merciful, Ibadur Rahman, as described in Surah Al-Furqan, has to do with their manner of walking. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا the slaves of the All-Merciful are those who walk humbly on the earth and who, when the ignorant speak to them, say, Peace, Salama. Surah Al-Qan, Surah number 25, Ayah 63. 
because of their humility and good character, they do not fall into unnecessary disputes with ignorant people. Rather, they gracefully avoid them and wish them peace. Humbleness and humility are among the noblest virtues a believer could be blessed with. This is because true believers keep an eye on their deficiencies and imperfection. It does not behoove a person to be arrogant and haughty. The best of humanity, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was himself very humble, modest, and simple. Rather than strutting and acting proudly as conquerors normally do, he entered Mecca after its conquest with utmost humility. We learn from the seerah that in gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the peaceful victory over Mecca, and in praise and reverence to him, he lowered his head so much while riding his mount that his beard touched the back of his mount. Indeed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's humility is unmatched. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone who possesses the attributes of praise, greatness, and pride. فَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ رَبِّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَرَبِّ الْأَرْضِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ All praise belongs to Allah. All praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the Lord of the earth, Lord of the worlds. وَلَهُ الْكِبْرِيَاءُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ All majestic greatness, pride, belongs to him in the heavens and earth. He is the Almighty, the All-Wise. Surah Al-Jatiyah, Surah number 45, Ayat 36 and 37. In a hadith Qudsi, a sacred hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is speaking on behalf of Allah. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ الْكِبْرِيَاءُ رِدَائِي وَالْعَظْمَةُ إِزَارِي فَمَنْ نَازَعَنِي وَاحِدًا مِنْهُمَا قَذَفْتُهُ فِي النَّارِ He, Allah said, pride is my cloak and greatness is my lower garment. And whoever competes with me with regard to either of them, I shall throw him into hell. Sahih Muslim. The words rida and izar in this hadith denote respectively the dress put around the shoulders and around the waist, as was the custom in Arabia. Naturally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not to be conceived as having mass or body that would need a dress. Such allegorical expressions are attributes of divine glory. So whoever competes to become associated with Allah in these attributes belongs to hell. One of Allah's names is Al-Mutakabbir, the supremely great. The Arabic word Kibriya and its derivatives from the three letters root Kaf, Ba, Ra have to do with nobility, greatness, majesty, glory, pride, and carry other similar shades of meaning. We have, for example, in Surah Al-Hashr, this great ayah that enumerates nine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون It is he, Allah. There is no God except him, the king, al Malik, the most holy, al Quddus, the source of peace, al salam the grantor of security, al-mu'min, and the guardian over all, al-muhaymin, the almighty, al-aziz, the supreme in might, al-jabbar, al-mutakabbir, the majestic, supremely great. 
Subhanallahi amma yushrikun, glorified is Allah far above what they associate with him in worship. Surah Al-Hashr, Surah number 59, Ayah 23. The first quality of true believers described in Surah Al-Mu'minun is that they are humble in their prayers. Qad aflah al-mu'minun, true believers are indeed successful. Alladhina hum fi salatihim. Khashi'un, they are those who pray humbly. Surah number 23, ayat 1 and 2. The word used in this ayah for humbleness is khushur. That denotes humbleness and humility towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humbleness of character is the foundation of all moral excellence. The way one walks and talks are indicators of a person's nature and conduct. Arrogance is not to be equated with self-confidence. While the former is despicable, the latter is commendable. A Muslim must possess and reflect self-confidence and be proud of his or her deen, his or her religion and Islamic identity especially when it comes to challenging the enemies of Islam and Muslims. The Prophet Sirah mentions the story of a companion named Abu Dujana, which makes us comprehend the contextual distinction between arrogance and self-confidence. Anas radiallahu anhu reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took hold of his sword on the day of the battle of Uhud and said, who would take it from me? Everyone stretched his hand saying, I would do it, I would do it. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, who would take it in order to fulfill its rights? Then the people withdrew their hands. Abu Dujana on the other hand said, I am here to take it and fulfill its rights. Abu Dujana was a man of courage who utilized to stand proud and brave in war. He had a red headband that he wore round his head. Whenever he was headbanded, everybody knew that he was determined to fight to death. As a result, as soon as Abu Dujana took the Prophet's sword and put on his headband, he began strutting proudly. Upon seeing this, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, This is a sort of walking that Allah detests, except in such circumstance, the battlefield. When it comes to asserting one's skills and capabilities for a good cause and for the overall good, then it must be done. This is self-confidence and not arrogance. Arrogance is an evil trait which people had before and people have now. We had Nimrud and Fir'aun in the past. We have people like them today. Heads of ruthless and oppressive regimes, not wanting to relinquish their thrones. Allah does not like such people. Surah Al-Nahl makes it clear that the final destination of such arrogant people is hell. فَدْخُلُوا أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا فَلَا بِئْسَ مَثْوَ الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ Enter the gates of hell, remaining in it forever. How evil is the abode of the arrogant, al-mutakabbirin. Surah Al-Nahl, Surah number 16, Ayah 29. We are also reminded in Surah Al-Zumar, أَلَيْسَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَثْوَلْ لِلْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ Do not the arrogant have a dwelling place in hell? Surah Al-Zumar 39, Ayah 60. Arrogance is among the major sins, kaba'ir, in Islam. It affects the human heart. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Ta'ala has sent this command to me through revelation. 
Take to humility. Let no man pride on another man, nor adopt an attitude of self-eminence, and let no one be unjust to anyone. Another hadith tells us that the Prophet sallallahu said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر He who has in his heart an atom's weight of pride shall not enter paradise. Yet in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu has been reported to have said, On the day of Qiyamah, Arrogant people will be raised as humans scaled down to the size of tiny ants under the shadow of disgrace descending from all sides. They will be driven to a prison of hell. May Allah save us from hell. Amin. This concludes the series on the Quranic version of the Ten Commandments. We need to take all the divine commandments very seriously. As regards to all the prohibitions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلُّ ذَلِكَ كَانَ سَيِّئُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ مَكْرُوهَا The evil of all these actions is hateful to your Lord. Surah Al-Isra, ayah number 38. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be his true humble slaves, and to be modest and moderate in everything we do. May we submit to him, obey his commandments, and comply all that he enjoined upon us. Ameen. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa li sa'iri al-muslimina wa al-muslimat fastaghfiruh. إنه هو الغفور الرحيم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته